Hello, welcome to probably my favorite episode of Quarter Horse Customs here. We are finally going to take this mess and put it back in my 387 stroker block with you. Here, put it together. You're going to, don't worry, you're going to be able to see everything we do in here. The important stuff. I mean, I'm sure you don't want to see everything, but you'll see most of it. So, to start this off, I personally like to put the camshafts in first, mainly because, you know, back here, it's kind of hard to get to. You don't want that cam to nick the bearings all the way through. And it's always good to put just a little bit extra assembly loop back here on this back bearing because you can put it on, but as you go through, you lose a little bit, lose a little bit more, lose a little bit more. And then by the time you're back here, there's really nothing else to lose. You just have nothing. Hopefully you primed your engine good because your back bearing is probably thirsty. So let's go ahead and grab our summit cam and get her thrown on in here. But before that, this is my wife. She's going <laughs> to reluctantly join in on the video today. <laughs> She's the whole reason that we're doing this again. If it wasn't for her and my father convincing me to get back and get her going again, you know, don't know if we'd be doing this right now, but we are. So, without further ado, let's start getting this thing assembled. Okay, so here is our summit racing cam. It's it's not crazy, but it is definitely a fun, decent cam for starting a 387 build. Gives you a good, well at least it gave me a good starting point in terms of lift and duration, etc. My wife here is gonna go ahead and start putting some assembly leave on. Now when you're putting the camshaft in, it's always good to have, well, there's a special tool you're supposed to have for here, but a big old bolt works. Like, I believe this is a timing cover bolt, actually. Threads in here, has a nice little grab for a handle. Because you really don't want to bang this up as you're going through, because these lobes will take nicks out of the cam bearing. So you want to be pretty gentle as you're doing it. And as you're going in, you know, just kind of guide it through. And if you got to take a second, get inside the cam journal, you know, take a breather. And then you can go ahead and start moving on to the next one. So I'm going to leave it sit here inside this front cam bearing while she goes ahead and loops up the rest of it here. Then I like to come back here and kind of guide it in a little bit. Again, you don't want to beat these cam bearings. Now, as you can see, that back cam bearing is pretty much lost all of its assembly loop. You know, I like to put a little bit in the bearing, but we're going to go ahead and put just a little bit more on there just to help it get going before we finish assembling it. That way, she just has a little bit more. There we go. And there you have it. The cam is now into the block, and you should be able to spin it. That's pretty good. If you got binding spots, you might want to have your cam bearings looked at because you really don't want to be binding your cam because just like a main bearing or rod bearing, that cam bearing can eat up on your cam. Personally, if I'm going to have to rebuild an engine block, I'd like to be able to keep my cam. You know, that's a pretty hefty investment, especially if you get a custom grind. Not what we did here, but you know, we like our budget build. So. Any parts that can be saved and reused later, that helps the next build. Never know. Maybe I put a better cam in here. Don't tell the wife. Shove this in my red Mustang. Give her a little more pet. Now we're going to go ahead and put the cam thrust plate on, so that way it kind of holds it in place there. But when you're putting that in there, you're probably going to have some assembly lube all over. So you know, go ahead and just take some brake clean. Probably find a full cam because. Hey, 
Okay, so down here, we're gonna have the back of your thrust plate. It's gonna have this little oil chamfer here. When you put this on, you need to make sure this oil chamfer here goes right there in that oil galley so we can oil the front of your camshaft or else, well, they are gonna have a bad day. My wife's gonna grab the torque wrench here. I'm just gonna put a little dab of this on there. If you see us looking around like we're looking for a goat, that the youngin just kind of walking around. She's, it's really her barn, her motor, her cars. For once, the wife doesn't get nothing. That's a little joke. And you're gonna torque these little buggers down to eight to 10 foot pounds. Not eight to 90, not 80 to 100, eight to nine. Just nice enough to get it snuggled in. Watch that, will keep it in there. So we got our torque wrench here set to nine foot pounds. Right there in the middle. Should make everything work out pretty happily. By the way, we're not running, you know, thousand dollar snap on wrench. You know, we are a budget shop. We got a Quinn Hobo Freight Special. A little bit more expensive than the cheapos, but this one's dedicated to right engines. And by dedicated, I mean I use it on engines and anything else in the court spec on because I can't find my other one. <laughs> there we go. Now we got a cam in, thrust plates on. Next, we're going to start working on cleaning out where the main bearings go. So we can finally put this crank in here, bring you guys down in here and see where and why we have a clearance. But we also gotta check our clearances too, because you know. Thanks, cylinder number six, you know, whole reason we're doing this rebuild. Good job. But we don't want grease or assembly lube or WD-40 or anything back behind your bearings. Because that's number six. It's been Round and around. Now, in case you didn't watch the other video, we did have to grind our tank 20,000 steps. So, right now, for some reason, that's Eleanor, by the way. Her shop, not mine. So, uh, the bearings I really wanted were the H Series Clevites. Well, I looked, she looked, engine machine shop looked. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't find them. Nobody's got them. So, we still got Clevites. They're the MS minus 1432P minus 20. Now, these are the P series bearings. If you're gonna go ahead and get the same kind of bearings, being a P bearing, which is a nice tri-metal street strip bearing, you can use that part number, just take off the minus 20. Because minus 20 signifies that we are minus 20 thou on the bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these guys in here. Maybe I'll bring you on down in. And then we're gonna bring the crankshaft on in here and we're gonna plastic gauge it. Make sure that everything comes out to a good clearance so we can just hopefully take those back off, lube it up, shove our crank in for good, and get moving on to pistons and rods. You can go ahead and come on in here. Now if you notice here our bearings have two different kinds here. You got or smooths. Okay, see there's no groove in there. If you read on there, don't know if you can see it, but right, right above my little fingertip right there, it should say lower. It doesn't mean lower from when you're looking at the engine block like this. It means it goes in the main cap and it becomes the lower. So keep that in mind when you're putting them in here too. And these ones don't say upper, but the uppers have a groove because the oil holes will come through here and this is how it's gonna oil your main and then oil will bypass from this hole to the hole over here, which I'll show you in the block, to go up and oil your cam and lifters and such. And then these guys, these are your thrust bearings. These are kind of important for, you know, forward go backward sliding. Yeah, really don't wanna put those in the wrong spot. Don't even think you can. So let's start getting these guys in the block. So your thrust bearing is gonna go right here in the middle on a small block for it, 302, 351, right here in the middle. I believe small block Chevys are on the back. But for small block Ford, 
We're gonna put them in here. Do not get your glove trap underneath there. I'm gonna get it down in there nice and flush on both sides, and that little tab right there is gonna go right in that little notch. Now, a lot of you might think, well, I don't need to worry about cleaning and such because that tab is gonna hold that bearing in place, right? Not exactly. That tab is just kind of a locating tab to make sure you guys put it in the right spot. I believe some of the older blocks don't actually have that tab. Now, I'm not really gonna rush on this, so we can turn this into a time lapse if you guys get bored, but as you can see now, we got two in here. There's those holes I was telling you about. It's connected there. That way, that will fill with oil. So oil will oil the main, and then it will back feed up, go straight down this little chamfer right here, down in there, and go and oil the cam bearing. Making it as flush as possible here. Don't really want it sticking up and smashing the other bearing. Here is a 3.85 stroke crank. This is what gives us our stroke. So you want to be very gentle with this. You don't want to ding up those new bearings we just put in. Boom. There we go. That thing's huge. When you look at a stock crankshaft compared to this one, this guy is a beefy boy. So, next thing we're going to do, we're going to make sure that all these oiling holes, I'm going to have her come in and show you real quick. Do not want these oiling holes here when we do our plastic gauge, because if you get plastic gauge in there, you might get a wrong reading. All right, now, I'm a budget shop. Well, we're not at a, a shop, it's a personal shop. I'll help out our buddies and stuff, but I don't... I, I, I'm not buying micrometers and dial calipers and all that good stuff just to check my bearing clearances when three bucks get you some plastic gauge. Now, there's different clearances of your plastic gauge. One thing you want to make sure is there's an inch side and you got the millimeter side. I want inches, so I'm not going to look at the millimeters. And then there's also the red, green, and I believe blue, maybe purple, one of those two. For what I want for specifications, I want the green, and probably what you're going to want too. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a little strip, and we're going to put it across on each of our mains. Then we're going to take our main cap, put the bearing in there, and torque them down. And then we're going to untorque them, take them off. There's going to be a reading, and that's going to tell you when you measure that up there on that little plastic gauge thing. I'll tell you what your clearance is, estimatedly. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. You guys stay there. I'll do this. As we went over and just cut a small piece of plastic gauge off. We're going to put it right down where the bearing is going to go in line with the crank. Then we're going to bring the main cap over, and we're going to bolt this guy down. And that's going to smash. The main cap off, we'll show you what our clearance is. Now on the thrust bearing, what I did, I don't, don't 100% quote me. No, I'm not a professional here. That's just what I did last time. I put a piece on both sides because the thrust bearing has that oil groove that goes all the way around. So if you put it just in the middle, you're only going to get the end in the end. So I put it on both sides. That way I can see what both sides get. Like I said before, we're using ARP bolts. You, they ask that you put ARP lube. If you're buying a set, it comes with a little packet that I just rebuild me. <laughs> I had to break out a new bottle. And then you put a little bit under this chamfer. And what they make sure you read the instructions. Just, that helps you a lot. There's a little chamfer on there compared to this side. You want that chamfer, chamfer facing the bolt head. So you want that chamfer right there. So you put a little bit of loop in there, smack it down, and it helps ensure proper torque. We're gonna go ahead and put a little dab. 
on each one of our bolts, make sure it transfers up, and that'll go right down in there, all the way back. Now, before you go and do your final torquing on these, when you're actually assembling it, it's always good to know where your oil pump pickup's gonna be. Because on your pickup, we have this little fella here. And he hooks to the oil pump. Always good to check where it goes, because your oil pump will sit here, this guy will be bolted here, and like I said, this guy goes right there. So this one will get the unique bolt. It's gonna have a little stud there for the oil pump pickup to go on and have a nut run down. Make sure you know where that's going to go before you go and torqueize all this stuff and go, hey, I'm going to move him up after you have the whole motor put together. Then you got to go through and retorque, and it's just not fun. Not that I did that. Really want to make sure you don't put any extra load on your main caps because remember we're measuring clearances so you know if you go banging on them you're going to smash that plastic gauge and you're going to be like ho oh, oh, ho my tolerances are way too tight and then you go get different bearings and you go whoa now my tolerances are through the roof and be careful as you're going through make sure you run them down you know don't get aggressive and when you're torquing them you don't want to torque one then torque the other you want to go back and forth and then we're going to work our way out now there's no designated sequence, but we're going to start with our thrust bearing. Go to this one, this one, this one, this one. Alright, now if you have the same set of ARP bolts I got, you're going to have a 9 16 for your main guys and a 11 16 for this guy. So that does get a little bit annoying when you're torquing because you're going to be going through and going back and forth multiple times and you got to switch your end. I mean, you can go buy a second torque wrench. I'm not going to buy a second torque wrench, so I'm going to deal with it. So the main bolts get torqued down in three sequences. Some people say to do it one way, some people say to do it another way. Uh, the way we did it last time was 50, 75, 100. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again this time because as again I said, it worked last time. So I'm not really going to argue with something that worked. One thing I will say the downfall about this, this is a three quarter inch wrench. 3 8 ratchet and it is short so you eat the Wheaties in the morning there we go now thankfully <laughs> the fun one with the two is done so we're going to throw you through a little you know speed it up time lapse here and we'll get the rest of you done Now we're done with the first stage. Now we're going to go up to the second stage, which is 75 foot pounds. Also, if I didn't state it, it's really important to not use assembly lube on your bearings because that'll just mess everything up. And don't, don't go spinning. That'll just eat your bearings up, screw the plastic gauge. No touchy. There, now that the arm's exhausted, we get to do it again for just checking clearances. And then of course we get to take it all back apart, check the clearances, hopefully everything's good, and then do it all again. This time we're gonna go ahead and adjust the torque wrench before we get all the way up to 100 foot pounds, or for whatever bolts you're using specifies. It's good to keep your all your papers and documents in a folder. That way, if you ever have to do a rebuilding, you just pull it out, you know. Or if you're like me and you forgot to do that, you can turn it off online. Summit Racing has it all the way down to the bottom. You just gotta keep going under the comments, under the reviews. Read the questions, if you have any questions. There's a lot of good answers about this crank. In the question section but for bolts and then you have instructions you go ahead and print those up or just keep the original copy around you don't have 15 projects going on at the same time where you, you lose them 
That's what we do. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take these up to 100. All right, so now that your shoulder hurts, your back hurts, everything's torqued down, I have to take it all back off. And we're gonna see what kind of plastic gauge readings we got. Cross our fingers here, <laughs> knock on wood. Everything's gonna be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and reverse the process. We'll go backwards, take the outer ones off and work our way back in. That way it can unflex how it needs to be back down onto the brush span. All right, now that's done. See, my wife, she's, she wants to know, like yesterday, not today, not tomorrow, not even in five minutes, she wants to know right now. So, she should probably help her before, you know, she does some difficult thing. All right, moment of truth. Tune in next time for, I'm just kidding. So, back to our plastic gauge, remember? We don't want the millimeters, we want the inches. So we're gonna rip off a little section of this. We're gonna open up the cap and we're gonna see just how good we're looking. We're gonna bring you on in here for this because I don't think you can see that far away. All right, welcome back up in here. Now, that piece of plastic gauge has now smashed into here. And we're going to take this guy. Again, remember, it's hard to read there, but it'll say in right there at the top. So we're going to compare it now. You know, well, three is a little big, 1.5. Eh, no, we are looking pretty much dead on if you can I know it's really hard to see that we're back up here now that one looked great cross your fingers start knocking on my wood if anybody wants to join in for me I get really used to luck <laughs> it's raining today but in two weeks in two weeks from today we're supposed to be up at dragway 42 you know with this engine here And I gotta work in between there too. This one looks like we're gonna be the lucky too. <laughs> Thank you, guy. <laughs> you are knocking on wood for me. <laughs> Thank you. Nope. Again, right on 20 pal. Great. It's starting to look really good. Now remember, these are your good bearings. You don't wanna booger them up, don't drop them. Be gentle, you know. I know you're in a rush. You want to get your stroker going. Messed up a bearing. Last time, not this time. All right, cross your fingers. Keep, keep knocking on wood there for me, buddy. Again, beautiful. We are right at 20 thou. Now I was getting nervous. Can we get them all on a row? Don't know yet, but I might have to stop the video here and go buy me a lot of video. But we still got eight connecting rod clearances to go, so not yet. Oh, this is what I was afraid of. I'm just kidding. We're good to go. Thank you. Okay, we want to make sure to take off this plastic gauge. We really don't want that going through the bearings. And then we're gonna pull the crank back out. We're gonna assembly loop this guy up. And we're gonna flop it back in here. And then we're gonna start on pistons, connecting rods, more clearances. Little side note, save on the boxes. I'm really glad I kept this box around. I was able just to Throw the crank back in the box, took it to my machinist, said, hey, <laughs> messed up. Can we fix this? And he goes, ooh, <laughs> it messed up pretty big. Really good guy. He got us done. Here we go. 
I'm gonna glove up and start doing some assembly loop. All right, so I just want to clarify, I'm not sponsored by anybody, so if you see, you know, Jays, performance products, I'm not sponsored. I just, Delaware is like 45 minutes from here, so Summit's two and a half. If Jigs has got it, Summit doesn't, even if they both do, Jigs is closer. But if I got time, you know, if I had a couple weeks, wanted to order everything out, I would probably do Summit because their website's a little bit easier to navigate. But what I mostly do is I'll go on Summit and I'll pick out my parts, except for that guy. And then I'll go on Jigs and I'll throw my part numbers in there, order them in, go, hey, I'm gonna come up to your little Delaware distribution center and pick up some parts. And they're like, cool, see you then. I go up and pick them up. I'm also very impatient, so it's quite well. Now make sure on the thrust bearing, you also get these sides here. You know, thrust bearing takes a lot of, a lot of that torque. So you want to make sure to have that side done too. What you guys will have to end up doing is you'll be putting this on and you'll be spinning the crank around and you'll have to find out everywhere you're going to be clearancing. Then you're going to take it apart, have to clean everything back up, put it back in. Take it back apart, make sure everything's good, put it back in. Make sure you do a really good deep cleaning because it's not going to like all that metal in there. A little bit of an issue the other day where one of the cam bearings are messed up. Thank you to Bart. He uh, went ahead and got me some new cam bearings in here, so I didn't have to go and clean my other block. But if you guys want to see it done, you know, if I can't get the money up to build another one, and one of you guys are here in Ohio and are doing one, and you're unsure of how to do it, you want some help, put it down in the comments. She'll read it. She loves comments. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll work something out where you come to me or I'll come to you and we'll. We'll do your block together and we'll make a video about it to help other people. Because that's, that's what we're all about here. We're, I'm, we're not in it for the big gains. We're about helping you guys do stuff like this on a budget. That's, that's all we're here for. Again, here we go again. 3.85 stroker crank. Back in. Ha! Huh. <laughs> she looks so much prettier now. Now we're going to go ahead and put assembly lube on the main caps. Put them back in and... And then we get to torque it all again. <laughs> Yay. Again, don't forget, you know, get the plastic gauge all about the top bearing too. Be careful with your bearing. If you're using H series bearings, remember that black coating is intentionally there. And get a healthy bit on there. Again, we're gonna try not to get it on our cap areas because we want that to sit nice and flush and not have any interference with anything going on in there. Again, here we are with the thrust bearing. You see, you got, you got the side here. Make sure you get that assembly lube up on that side there. Another thing, if you don't know it, 351 Windsor caps are numbered one, two, three, and obviously, big end, number five. And before I forget, this is the perfect time to put your rear main seal in. Not that I was almost forgetting until I reminded you guys, but I'm going to go over here and grab the rear main seal, but I didn't forget. I was just making sure you remember. Yeah, let's get it. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and throw some assembly lube on this guy and plop him on the crank to get the rest of this in here while it's down. I know some of you are probably like, you don't need to put that in until the end. It's the last thing you need. That's great. If you want to do it that way, more than merrier. Me, I sucked last time. All right. So now our crank's in, our bearings are clearanced. Everything is looking good. Remember all those torques we did? You know, torquing it down? Um, we're going to do it again. But this time, we're just going to go ahead and speed on through that because we're probably going to throw the heater on for little boss lady. So it's going to get kind of loud and you guys don't want to hear that. So, here we go.
Well, there we go. We now have all of our main bearings done, torqued in, rear main sealed, hopefully. And now remember, it's going to have a little bit of hesitation due to the thick, thick assembly lube. But there you go. We have our crankshaft in, and she is big. I'll go ahead and open up uh, 351 Windsor for you guys soon. Well, that guy there is getting ready to build his. He's got his torn down, so he already knows what it looks like. But for the rest of us, I'll show you just how much difference these counterweights are from a 351 Windsor to a 387. Okay. All right, so we're back. Had a little snack break. Got some dinner. The little one got a little tired. Got her settled down. But we are back. And we got the crank in. And we're ready to move on to pistons. Now we covered this in the other video. I'm not going to point to a side. I don't know where it's at. But there's another video before this one. Last week. So uh, these pistons we're using are forged Fox body pistons out of an 86 to 96. Sorry. Correction. 86 to 89. And we put them on 351 Windsor rods. As you can see, whew, <laughs> a little bit of difference. Even though the 302 rods are forged, these football rods, footballs, whew, the football. They're not, but everybody says they're good to like 750 horsepower plus. Well, that part was the easy part. We found out later on that you will have to fly cut your pistons. And you can see here, you can see the top reliefs on this one are made bigger than this one. Same piston, just had to machine a wee bit on the reliefs there. We have the rotating assembly balanced, two harmonic balancer, crankshaft, flywheel, and pistons. So they all have a little bit of reliefs. We also covered that putting your pistons in will be the most tedious process. Not only do you have to check your clearances, then you gotta take it back apart. And then you gotta go through each one and mark out where your connecting rod bolt is gonna interfere with your block. And it's a lot of put together, take apart, put together, take apart. But I'll show you that here shortly after we get all of ours in. And then you're also going to run into the issue. If you look at this side here, how it's got that nice curve. This side kind of makes that, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not a machinist. I had to, I had to make it fit. It, it comes around in these big old counterweights. Run right there where the piston is. You got to take a little bit of the skirt off. That's going to be a little tedious too. Let's go ahead and dive in. You want to see my wife cringe? Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm still holding it in place. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to spin this guy over. We're going to oil this up. We're going to grab piston number one. And we're going to get her down on the hole. And then we're going to get piston number five down on the hole. And we're going to check our bearing clearances. We're going to show you in depth how to do this one. And then we're just going to kind of go through the other ones. We'll show you about the clearances. Trust me. Because that guy back there, he's still... <laughs> you, you better keep crossing those fingers because I need it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, for some of you guys who haven't done this, uh, if you don't know which one's number one, if you're looking at an engine, number one will always be further out. If you see here, you draw an imaginary line. This one's back further. So this one's number one. That's a good way. I, I cannot say for all engines, but... Every engine I've worked on, small block Ford, small block Chevy. Yep, number one's gonna be over here, on the passenger side, all the way up. So, here we have our number one piston. And another thing to remember, when you're putting this in, there's a little dot here. This dot says, I go that way. So you want this dot on all of your cylinders. It also has <laughs> I'm like, my wife says, there's, there's an arrow on the bottom. So if you're like looking for So, <laughs> if you're checking the bottom of your block, 
There's an arrow. You probably won't be able to see it, but especially not with this honker of a crankshaft. But if you're on a 302, it's a good way to check. Dot forward. So if you're ever taking one apart and you see one backwards, something wrong. So, give me one second here to get gloved up because <laughs> we are getting oily. Hey, look at that. We're back. We got more stuff. So, uh, he's got some good old 10W30 liquid dinosaurs here. Piston ring compressor. And you've already met this guy. He's a fancy piston. Now, you really don't want to shove this fella down in there with these out because that beautiful crankshaft you just spent money on to have balanced and everything. And we're on a budget here. Putting the neck in that? <laughs> That's not. Nope. So, you can buy the little fancy protectors. I had them once. They work great. They're with all the other papers that I said not to lose. The other bar. <laughs> well, what you can do is just buy yourself a little bit of hose here. And, huh. I have taken a one foot piece of hose and turned it into like 15 of those pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and oil on this oil ring. This piston ring compressor is awesome. So once you have your piston rings all lined up, so you're supposed to put them, there's a lot of controversy on how to do it. Some people say compression ring, compression ring, oil ring, oil ring, oil separator. You can look up on the interwebs. There's many different ways to do it. I just do compression, compression, oil ring separator, oil ring, oil ring. Sadly, another thing I won't be able to cover in this video, but if you want to, when I build her motor, we will, is a ring gap. But again, there are numerous videos out there on how to do that. You should be fine. Okay, so now she's oiling up the cylinder egg. We got oil on our oil rings. You wanna go ahead and put some liquid dinosaur in here? The absolute beautiful part about this piece, like I said, you just gotta drop it down in here. <laughs> Not the piston, you know. Don't drop the piston. Look at that. Boom. We are in to the bottom, ready to go on the block. No twisting, no yanking. Because one of the most annoying things about that thing, one from Harbor Freight, yeah, it works, great. All kinds of pistons. But it spins your piston rings. I didn't, I didn't like that. that. So many times. Together, apart, together, apart. This guy, sides right in. Boom. Make sure your crankshaft is straight down from wherever your block is positioned at. That way your rods can just come down like this and go right onto the crankshaft. You're not worried about nicking it. So now, look at that. Piston's in the hole, ready to go. All we gotta do is come down here, line it up as we tap it down, and we're seated. Just like that. We flip it over, put some plastic gauge in there, check on it, if it comes out good, assembly a little bit, bolt it together, torque it down, we're done. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> I heard that gas. Yeah. That guy there, he said, I need me one of them. You do. <laughs> I'm not sponsored here, but <laughs> I don't care where you get it. Amazon, Jags, Summit, Speedway Motors, Mom and Pop store down the street. Get you one of these. <laughs> you, you will not regret it. Because every one of you is going to tear apart a 351 Windsor. And when you do that, put your eyeballs on where the piston goes down in the cylinder. Because this one's way down there now. Way down there. No replacement for this placement. Except for its induction. <laughs> Displacement. <clears throat> now we're going to flip her on over. We're going to put some plastic gauge on there. We're going to bring it back down here. So we got our plastic gauge on there. You're going to want to make sure that this little tang right down here, this little mark right here, this little notch, you have this notch up here on the connecting rod cap. You want those to go together. 
Okay. So we'll take this guy, bring her around. As long as you have piston rings on, you don't have to worry about holding the piston in place. Torque spec for these is 40 to 45 foot pounds. So we're gonna settle for a good 42.5. Go ahead and take this off and back to using our fancy plastic gauge checker. Remember, inches up here at the top. We're gonna bring it back down here so you can you can join in too. Here we go. Plastic gauge. We're better than one thou. It's really looking like one and a half. I really would have wanted to be closer to two, just because that's what I did last time and it worked really well. But I believe factory spec is one and a half thou. Pretty sure my buddy who's running 800 horsepower on a boosted 351 Windsor is running one and a half thou. So we should be pretty good. A little tighter than I wanted. But I mean, beggars can't be choosers. We're getting some happening here. Hey, look at that. I just noticed oiling is doing its job. You see, when the oil comes in, it pumps into the main cap through those holes we were talking about and up into the crankshaft to oil your connecting rods. Just in case you didn't know that. A little fun fact. Alrighty, well I apologize for that. Apparently we ran out of film storage again. But here we are. We plastic gauged all of our rod bearings. And they all came out to the same right around factory spec, which is exactly what we want. So the wife's working on cleaning out the plastic gauge making sure there's no oil or anything behind the bearings, and we're gonna get them assembly lubed up, put them back in the block, and do a final rotational check for clearances. So give us a few minutes, and we'll be back. All right, so here we go. These are all the clearances. First, I'm gonna show you them. One, we have notched here. We notched down here on the cylinder wall. Same with this one. This one back here, kind of hard to see back in there. And there she is, back down in there. We notched this one here. We notched this one here. We notched this one here. And I already told you about this big meaty guy right here we notched out. And on our pistons, I'll show you right here why we did a little bit of notching right here. Go ahead and spin it around. See how close that got? Oof. Now, our calibrated gauge here may or may not look just like a zip tie. So, see how we're really tight right here? Coming into that where we clearanced? Go ahead and bring that around. Bring it around a little more. Zip tie never got caught. That's what <laughs> I used as my clearance. Make sure you get a nice little thick one. You know, whatever you feel is best. You can use feeler gauges if you want to, but here, let's give you some video of it going around in circles here. Here's another one of them guys that needed some clearance. See right there? We got really close to right here. So yeah, we, we clearance on that piston down there. Like I said, these guys here in the middle, they're not terrible, but keep an eye on them. This guy's pretty bad up here. This guy's really bad. This is gonna be the most annoying part is grinding here. But remember, this guy doesn't go to anything. If you gotta do a delete on it, it's not gonna hurt anything. Line these two dowels up here and here. You want these guys to be lined up while you put it onto the cam. Which is really fun. So you should be on there. She's got a little bit of slap to it. We did just reuse on the factory chain. Well, the replace chain. Save a couple bucks. You know. Alright, now we got the timing chain on there. Our dots are lined up. Uh, it's time to pick what fuel system you're going with. If you're going with a mechanical fuel pump, you'll want this little fuel pump driver. It kind of goes like this around on the cam as it spins around and it runs a little lever here that goes bump, 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 
pump. If you're running an electric fuel pump, which I am, I'm just going to run this guy who just helps sling oil up and around there. A lot of people say you don't need anything because you have a double roller timing chain, but I got it. Might as well slap it on there. So, torque spec is 40 to 45, so we're going to go with the good old 42.5. We are running a electric fuel pump, and the timing cover doesn't even have the casting in it for a fuel pump, so <laughs> not like I'm going to be able just to slap one on later on if I need it. So we're just going to run with this guy, save on that piece over there. Maybe another car we do needs that. You never know. So, well, all right, there you have it. We have done main bearings, rod bearings, clearance the block, clearance our pistons again, checked all of our clearances for our bearings. Everything is assembled in the bottom end. We got a timing chain and camshaft in. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to go ahead and tackle lifters, spider, push rods, rocker arms, heads, head studs, intake, intake gaskets, and everything associated with that. And you'll be another step closer to having your 387 done. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Meeting my wife here. Look forward to more videos. We will post as fast as we can. You know, the budget's not huge, but we will keep up with as much as we can, as fast as we can, to keep bringing you guys stuff. Thank you very much for tuning in with us. You have a nice night.